All right, welcome back. I'm going to talk through what we're going to do here, uh, but I'm not intending this to be any sort of extremely detailed guide. One, because uh, it's been a while since I've used it. I don't have a tremendous amount of knowledge on it. And really, I just want to kind of cover the new Dragon OS Noble uh, based on 24.04 and some things that I have noticed after getting it up and running. Uh, end goal here is we're going to use WSJTX. We'll do a little bit of FT8, but the twist on this or the spin on it is we're going to connect to another system uh, that's out at the back of my property over a uh, what's called Lilygo's T-Halo. So really the important part is I'm connecting over Halo uh, in about the 900-ish megahertz range based Wi-Fi. I think it's about an 8 megahertz wide channel. It can get a lot of data over it and we're going to run SDR++ on the uh, x86 small board computer I have out that has a AirSpy HF in a case outside hooked to a U-loop antenna just hanging up off the tree. It also has an RTL SDR hooked to a discovery dish but that'll be a different topic. And so SDR++ will be running in server mode so just pretend uh, I'm SSH'd into that uh, remote computer that's on my local network, mind you, uh, and I would have ran SDR++ tac tac or dash dash server, okay? I also will just point out uh, I installed Rust Desk on this computer I'm recording from. Uh, I'll take care of this in the next ISO, but uh, it needed libxdo3 installed as a, as a uh, dependency. Uh, let's see, what else? So... I have chosen to use um, SDR++ on this end as well. But one thing I'll take a look at here, let me think, I think it's in DSD FME. There is a script here for anyone that's asking about uh, virtual syncs and how you create them. I've not ran this yet, so I'm just gonna create one virtual sync using the example that's provided here. And I guess I'll find out here briefly if this is going to work. Um, should, but I guess we'll find out. Nope. Okay. So I'll make note of this. Although I'm a little concerned, pulse audio utils, I need to make sure this isn't going to remove pipe wire and all kind of other stuff. Yep. Nope. So we should be fine. Pulse audio dash utils. I'll make note of that. And let's see. So we should have a virtual sync created somewhere. Hopefully I don't mess up my recording. Yeah, so I see the virtual sync there. So let's start up SDR++. You can already see I have the IP address for the server I'm gonna to connect to. I have it on upper sideband. Let me think, what else? Built-in audio, interesting. Okay, so I guess I can output to virtual sync. Let's get it started up. Oh, also, I will start up the rig controls as well. So I'm connected. I did, I changed the sample type to in 8 applied compression. I can see my HF there, whatever, 912. I'm just going to leave it default settings right now. So now I'm connected over the Halo link. All right, let's... Start up our rig control. Let's change. I'll change the audio here in a second. So we have our SDR++ running. Now we can go under ham radio. Let's look at WSJTX. I've already started it once. You'd normally get a warning popping up uh, or a little uh, info thing um, that would pop up initially. I jumped into file. Uh, of course, you know, you got your call sign and grid information. You'd fill that out. I went right to radio, picked ham lib net rig CTL, uh, put the 127.001 by default. We should get a successful, uh, should come back successful. I think it would pop up normally, but you can see here it's saying connected. I could have swore something would pop up. 
The button will turn green if the connection is successful. Uh, well, I don't know. I'll look into that. Audio. Let's change this to uh, the virtual. Let's change this to the virtual sync. And then let's go. There's probably many different ways that you could do this. But let's change this to virtual sync. And then how are we looking? Okay, so we've got audio coming in here. And now if we pay attention here, let's do, let's change it to 20 meter. Give it a second. It is a little sometimes delayed. Let's see, 20 meter. Hmm. I'm looking for it to change the frequency. Let's see, connected 4502. I don't think we need to pick or put the port. At least I didn't a second ago. because it's a default now you see it changed I don't think it had anything to do with this it's just that over the T halo link I could have had a delay between when it was uh, you know changing and and you know so on and so forth but uh, I also had already made sure uh, I checked enable AP, although I got to look into what that really means. Mode was FT8 by default. Uh, I had already zoomed in, and you can see I'm I'm looking there at that 14075-ish. Again, I'm not going crazy into detail as to what all this means because I would probably just sound silly trying to explain what the wide graph is, uh, you know, where I've chosen to put markers and such. Uh, really, this is just about making the connection over this halo link and some other observations that I have found uh, while also just testing to make sure that everything is working as I or as intended in uh, Dragon OS. You can see it's the 2.7 pulled directly down from the WSJTX site and installed. Uh, SDR++ is um, built manually. So it would seem as though everything is working from SDR++ server into, uh, to include the virtual audio sync, you can see what I installed. Uh, last but not least, I did notice uh, initially when you install the latest Dragon OS, under ham radio would be your grid tracker. Uh, what was interesting, and I must have made this modification, when you run grid tracker, it's going to prompt you that there's an updated release and it'll attempt to install the Debian package upon closing it. Well, what's interesting is I must have accounted for, because uh, if you look at grid tracker desktop they only put it under the categories utility I'm gonna say something uh, maybe ask if the uh, person that makes grid tracker could consider adding the categories of uh, ham radio because you could see for example WSJTX is uh, also has ham radio included in there so what we can do is manually Nano, v, Vim, VI, whatever you want to use. Oops. Oop. Should reload and then uh, Grid Tracker would be back. I'm not quite sure why they just don't have that category listed by default. And then, of course, Grid Tracker. You can open this up in Dragon OS 
have not used this for a pretty long time. You can see that I'm getting the uh, pins or I guess location markers for, uh, that are coming along with the FT8 messages here. Uh, I definitely, I just recently went to a ham radio uh, or a radio club meeting, my first ever. And so I think it would be an opportunity to learn quite a bit more about everything that's going on here. I don't know, I find it very interesting uh, being able to run a remote solution, have my HF, my U-loop antenna out there, and at least be able to receive and look at these messages. The more I learn about it, obviously the more confident I will get. Uh, and there's many tutorials out there, but again, back to just wanting to show the steps to get up and running with the latest Dragon OS Noble release ISO and to show essentially everything is working. If I've missed anything or you all find something that could be better, uh, for example, I'm installing the latest uh, JS, JS8 call. Um, I'm going to work on that. And if there's any other ham radio tools you want to see, uh, let me know. All right, thanks.